So, from Resolute Johannes Florius to Absolute Johannes Hi everyone, welcome back to John Florio channel. I am Mary and I'm here to talk about the great John Florio. The main reason why John Florio has been deleted from the history of English culture and language and his personality distorted in Shakespeare books as that of the boring pedant is because John Florio was the famous Johannes Factotum. Therefore, they suggest his involvement in Shakespeare plays. If you distort someone's personality and you portray him as boring, evil spy against Shakespeare, people are not interested in him. People won't be curious. They will read his works. Because if you read John Florio's works, you would realize that he answered to the attack of 1592 in the Grosworth of Wit, in which he was accused of being a Johannes Factotum. In the last video, I showed you how in 1589, 1590, in a manaphone in Anatomy of Absurdity, Thomas Nash attacked John Florio, both Nash and Green. And Florio, in Second Fruits, 1591, replied to every line. Some of you, I don't remember who, but I read a comment. Someone wrote, so Florio had all these enemies, so uh, Nash and Green were all enemies of Florio. When he wrote his testament, John Florio wrote about his enemies to the Earl of Pembroke. To the Earl of Pembroke, John Florio wrote, keep my wife away from my enemies. It was 1625. Florio still had enemies. If you were a writer, a successful writer, who was making a difference in the literary circle or English Renaissance, of course you had enemies. You had to worry about those writers who didn't have enemies, because it means that they weren't changing history. Florio was. So my answer to one of these comments is yes, of course Florio had many enemies. He was vehement in his likes and dislikes. As people hated Florio, so many others loved Florio. He had many friends who supported him. Edmund Spencer, John Donne, Giordano Bruno, Philip Sidney, Gabriel Harvey, Ben Johnson, Matthew Gwynn, the Earl of Southampton, Robert de Verrue, all these people loved and supported Florio. And in Second Fruits, 1591, when Florio replied to Nash a green attacks, he, by writing the famous line, the English Italianate is a devil incarnate, which is the connection between Nash's attack of the Italianate pen and Florio's reply. When he signed that letter, Florio decided to change his name. He was no longer just John Florio. He was Resolute Johannes Florius. Florio signed himself in different ways. When he wrote Italian books, he signed himself as Giovanni. When he wrote English books, he signed himself either as Johannes Florius, because Latin was very common at the time, or as John Florio. 
In second fruit, John Furrier decides to change and to add this adjective resolute and he signed himself as resolute. Johannes Florus. Resolute. I F. Why? Because he was saying, I am resolute. You keep attacking me. I will keep writing and collaborating. I am resolute. Resolute. I F. But why? In the Groats Worth of Wit, is Shakespeare referred to as Johannes Factotum? And above all, why even absolute Johannes Factotum and not just simply Johannes Factotum? In 1598, John Florio published the first Italian English dictionary, A Word of Words, and he dedicated this beautiful dictionary to the third Earl of Southampton. In this dictionary, John Florio already created many English words. And in the epistle to the reader, John Florio writes something very important. In the first page, John Florio writes, I know not how I may again adventure an epistle to the reader. He begins this letter because he knows that the last time he published a work, Second Fruit, it was a disaster because they attacked him. He then makes a precise reference to 2HS that some scholars suggested was the Earl of Pembroke's secretary, Hugh Sanford. Why there was this quarrel between Florio and Hugh Sanford? Because in 1591 it was known that Florio had been the editor of Sir Philip Sidney Arcadia printed by Richard Field. And we know that Hugh Sanford, as the sister of Philip Sidney, were against this publication that John Florio did in collaboration with Full Greville and Matthew Gwynn. So Florio makes a reference to this H.S. But my quarrel is to a toothless dog that hateth where he cannot hurt, and would fain bite, when he hath no teeth, his name is H.S. And he writes that this man, under my last epistle to the reader, I.F., made as familiar a word of F, as if I had been his brother. Florio is writing that in the last epistle to the reader, Second Fruits, 1591, in which he signed himself as Resolute I.F., this huge Sanford made a familiar a name or his last name, so F, as I had been his brother. So, from resolute Johannes Florius to absolute Johannes resolute I F. This is how Florius signed himself. What he writes in a word of words, someone made a familiar a name of my last name, as I had been his brother, Resolute I F, Absolute I F. Absolute is a, a synonym of Resolute. I, Johannes F, Factotum. This is so simple that I don't know what else I should say now. Like, this man literally, on the first page of A Word of Words, wrote that someone insulted him by writing that he was a Johannes Factotum. He wrote it. The fact that Florio mentions his last name means that Hugh Sanford had insulted his last name. So, Johannes Florius became Johannes also, Florio specifies that he insulted his last name because the first name was Johannes, was the same. And absolute is a synonym of resolute. They, are the same, they have the same meaning. But that's not all, because what does Florio do? The magician of words. He has just published an English dictionary in which he created new thousand English words. He does the same. He takes the initials of 
IHS, he starts creating new insults in Latin with his initials. Let's read some examples. And might not a man that can do as much as you find as much matter out of HS as you did out of I, F. As for example, H, S, why may it not stand as well for her as Steltiti, as for Homo Simplex, or for Hara Selena, as for Horstis Studiosorum? Why it's in Latin? Because you send for use a Latin salt for Florio, factotum, if that's not clear enough. Also, just to specify how clear Florio it is in his works, and this is why scholars don't want you to know about Florio's works, Florio was the magician of words. He used words very carefully. When he writes, he made a familiar a word of my last name, a familiar a word. Why Florio described this word as a familiar a word? This word familiar comes from the Latin Italian famiglio. Who was a famiglio? A servant, a factotum. And this in Latin, besides Hadera Seguis, Harpia Subata, Humor Superbo, Hippocrito Simulator in Italian, and in English World Without End, Huff Snuff, Horse Stealer, Hop Sota, Hugh Sot, Humphrey Swine's Head. <laughs> this man literally just, <laughs> just published one of the most important works of English language. And on the first page, he makes a list of insults. Florio ends his attack by writing. How then will scoffing readers escape this mark of a maledicent? The pistol to the reader of A World of Words published in 1598 is a reply to the attacks that Florio received in 1592, in which he was define a Ioannes Factotum. In the growth world of wit, his enemies had altered, changed his last name, Florius, in Factotum, a Latin insult created by the new pen name John Florio used for his work Second Fruits, in which he signed himself as Resolute Ioannes Florius. Nash would have not missed the opportunity to take this insult made by Hugh Sanford and use it in the gross worth of wit. John Florio is the only writer who replied to these attacks. The only one. This is the main reason why today the majority of people don't know John Florio. Scholars, Shakespeare scholars, don't talk about him, and many anti stratfordians prefer to ignore him. These letters to the readers are the proof that this man was everything beside a pedant. It's so simple, so clear, that I have nothing else to say. Beside, stop underestimating John Florio. Stop using Florio as intermediator, as friend of, because it doesn't make any sense. Both Stratfordians and anti Stratfordians have underestimated John Florio, have ignored John Florio for many years. But as Bob Dylan once wrote, the times are changing. Now is the time. Stay resolute. Bye.